Mark says, if someone wanted to lower their ApoB and improve heart health, but didn't want to take a statin, what's the best alternative? Okay, there's a bit in this. Uh, firstly, I would want to have a discussion with Mark around why he didn't want to take a statin. And in fact, I would refer him to have that discussion with a cardiologist. So I just want that discussion to take place. But maybe he, he had tried a statin and uh, had some adverse effects and is looking for another solution. So he says, what's the best alternative? Well, again, as I just mentioned, we're really fortunate today in 2025 and people that have listened to my episodes with Thomas Dayspring, Dr. Thomas Dayspring, uh, will know that there are many different options uh, at our hands to lower ApoB. And I just mentioned them before. So in addition to statins, uh, and even in stat within statins, there's high intensity and low intensity. And often people do uh, you know, much better on a low intensity statin. Bempedoic acid, PCSK9 inhibitors, ezetimibe, these are all other alternatives for people to consider if they're not tolerating statins. And so that's a discussion to have with your primary practitioner, physician, cardiologist. Uh, but let's say, let's say that, that Mark didn't want to take medications at all. What can he do with his lifestyle? Well, the biggest lever that he can pull is with his nutrition. And this is where I would point people to the dietary portfolio, which was kind of originally devised by Dr. David Jenkins, uh, who's been on the show. Um, and then uh, many of his colleagues like Dr. Andrea Glenn, who's also been on the show, have, have done a lot of research on this dietary pattern, looking at how it affects cardiometabolic health and uh, markers like LDL cholesterol and ApoB. So on screen for those watching, I'm showing the portfolio diet and there's this kind of really nice PDF. It'll be in the show notes as well that breaks down four different things you can do with your nutrition that all together total to about a 30% reduction in your LDL cholesterol. And that's, that's, a, that's a fairly large you know, magnitude of LDL cholesterol reduction, similar to a, a low intensity statin, in fact. So what are these four components? And what I love about this is it's, you focus on what you're adding to the diet. It's not focusing on what you're removing, but by virtue of, of, of focusing on these four things, it means you're, you're going to eat less of other things. So number one is nuts. Eating 45 grams of, of nuts per day, just, you know, a couple of uh, small, two small handfuls of, of nuts. And you know, how does that affect LDL cholesterol? Well, nuts contain fiber, which lowers LDL cholesterol. And they also contain these unsaturated fats that also lower LDL cholesterol through a different mechanism by increasing the number of LDL receptors on the liver, which helps clear more LDL cholesterol out of the blood. So number one is, is nuts, 45 grams a day. Number two is plant protein, 50 grams per day. And this includes, you know, soy foods like tempeh and, and tofu, but also lentils and peas and chickpeas um, and beans. And there are a few different mechanisms at play here as to how this affects LDL cholesterol. The big ones are when you're consuming these sources of plant protein, your saturated fat consumption is naturally going to go down. Your fiber consumption is going to go up. Your phytosterol, which are these plant compounds, goes up, which help lower LDL cholesterol. So the net effect of... of aiming for 50 grams of plant protein per day, again, is this reduction in LDL cholesterol. Third recommendation within the portfolio diet is a focus on viscous or sticky fiber. And in short, really this is about eating enough fruits and vegetables throughout the day, sticking to whole unrefined versions of bread and uh, oats where possible, and again, eating foods like beans and lentils and chickpeas. All of these foods contain this, this viscous fiber, which really helps bind up a bile in the gut. And bile is made of cholesterol. When you bind up bile and it gets carried through the body and excreted, what happens is the, the liver says, hey, we need more bile. Typically, the liver is reabsorbing bile from the gut back into the liver. 
But when it can't reabsorb as much of this this bile, and I don't want to go into too much of a physiology lesson here, but bile is important for uh, absorbing fats and digestion. When the liver can't reabsorb as much back from the gut, it has to produce more. And to produce more, it requires more cholesterol. And so what happens is it upregulates that LDL receptor. Again, similar mechanism to what I spoke about earlier. More of this LDL cholesterol is pulled into the liver to make the bile. And in doing that, you lower LDL cholesterol in circulation. So that's that's the benefit of eating fiber, particularly this viscous or sticky fiber. And in fact, a really a quick hack not to replace eating fruit, fruits and vegetables, but bonus points is to go and get a psyllium husk supplement and have 10 grams of psyllium husk per day. And you can add that into your smoothie. And that has been shown to lower ApoB by about five milligrams per deciliter, which is a pretty significant reduction. And when you stack it with all of these other things, that's how you get to this kind of 30% reduction in LDL cholesterol. So the first three parts of the portfolio diet we've spoken about, nuts, plant protein, viscous fiber. And the fourth is plant sterols, two grams per day. This, this is one where I, based on my conversations with Thomas Dayspring, uh, have a few kind of mixed feelings. Plant sterols are these kind of cholesterol-like compounds that are found in plant foods. And they block the reabsorption of, of cholesterol in the gut or the absorption of cholesterol in the gut which helps lower LDL cholesterol. We know that, we have evidence to show that when you supplement with, with plant sterols, these phytosterols, you get a reduction in LDL cholesterol. We don't have evidence that spans over you know, five or 10 years to show that that de- definitively lowers risk of cardiovascular events. We can speculate, but we don't know that. And there is some concern that plant sterols, even though they block this cholesterol absorption in the gut, they can be absorbed themselves and they could be atherogenic. We don't, we don't really understand that until we have these longer term studies looking at cardiovascular disease outcomes with plant sterile supplementation versus a placebo. And this is where plant stanols get interesting because underneath this kind of phytosterol banner, these compounds in plants that block cholesterol absorption, there are plant sterols and plant stanols. And while both block cholesterol absorption, plant sterols get absorbed into our blood, the effect that they have uh, on our arteries and, and heart, a little bit unknown. Whereas plant stanols are almost exclusively blocking cholesterol, but not being absorbed into circulation. Only a very, very tiny percentage are actually absorbed into circulation. So that is why it is, it is Dr. Thomas Dayspring's recommendation to if you're going to supplement with plant sterols to find plant stanols which is what brands like Benicol no affiliation with this show are using uh, in their products in their margarine and and other products that they sell so if you're going to add plant sterols you know two grams a day is the recommendation in supplement form that'll give you an extra five to ten percent reduction in your LDL cholesterol if you, if you can opt for a plant stanol version. And that rounds out the portfolio diet. So Mark, if you're not wanting to take lipid lowering medications, then check out the link in the show notes for the portfolio diet. Follow these four recommendations and you could expect to see uh, you know, an approximately 30% reduction in your LDL cholesterol depending on your baseline uh, LDL cholesterol level. 